Florence Nightingale was an English social reformer, statistician, and the founder of modern nursing. Nightingale came to prominence while serving as a manager and trainer of nurses during the Crimean War, in which she organized care for wounded soldiers. She gave nursing a favorable reputation and became an icon of Victorian culture, especially in the persona of the Lady with the Lamp, making rounds of wounded soldiers at night. Every summer the Nightingale family traveled to their home in Derbyshire. On her walks around the area, Florence found herself drawn to the nearby cottages and their extremely poor inhabitants. She felt great personal satisfaction in taking them food, clothes, and medicine. She had those same feelings of purpose as she cared for an orphaned baby, nursed her grandmother through a serious illness, and spent the final minutes of her nanny's life at her bedside. She concluded that God had called her to care for the sick. Florence wasn't content, however, with offering hot drinks or smoothing pillows. She wanted to study the best ways to help patients, to assist with surgery and to handle birth and death confidently. She sought out a place for training. Her family was appalled at her decision since nurses had a reputation at that time or being drunken, careless, and dirty, and Victorian hospitals had a reputation for being places of disease more than health. So, Florence began her pursuit of nursing in secrets. By day, she lived a passive well-to-do life. At night, she studied hospital reports and wrote letters to request information about health care in Europe. She did this for 16 years, a period about which she said, I went down into the depths. During those years, she managed only to train briefly as a nurse in Germany. Then, at age 33, still battling strong objections from her family, she accepted the job of superintendent of London's institution for the care of sick gentlewomen in distressed circumstances. In 10 days, she took over a new location and made it ready for patients. The hospital directors and staff members were astonished, they had expected changes, but they hadn't counted on Florence to move so quickly. Her years of study had showed her what could and must be done. Her long endurance had also taught her not to take no for an answer. She began a one-woman campaign to rid the hospital of all filth and to make nursing an honorable profession. She personally spent countless hours at the bedside of patients. The hospital became a well-publicized success. When Sidney Herbert, the Secretary of State for War, asked Florence to take a party of British nurses to the hospital barracks near the Crimean War front, she quickly mobilized 38 nurses. Known among the soldiers as the Lady with the Lamp, she worked around the clock to aid wounded and sick soldiers. She eventually became seriously ill herself. Florence returned to England in 1856, after her exploits in Crimea, and for the next 50 years, she rarely left her sickbed, but nevertheless, changed the face of nursing. Nightingale's lasting contribution has been her role in founding the modern nursing profession. Stephen Paget in the Dictionary of National Biography asserted that Nightingale reduced the death rate from 42% to 2% during the Crimean War, either by making improvements in hygiene herself, or by calling for the Sanitary Commission. For example, Nightingale implemented handwashing and other hygiene practices in the war hospital in which she worked. She went blind at age 81, but still maintained lively contact with her school. She belongs to that select band of historical characters who are instantly recognizable, the lady with the lamp, ministering to the wounded and dying. BBC Profile of Nightingale Florence Nightingale died peacefully in her sleep in her room at 10 South Street, Mayfair, London, on 13 August 1910, at the age of 90. World changers find problems and address them, even though it might cost them. God is still in the ministry of affecting lives through people. Make yourself available. You can be a world changer. Thank you for watching.